In this tutorial video, I'm going to talk to you about the lesser sac or what's known as omental porsa. What's the lesser sac? You know, sac, it's a kind of a sac or cavity that's located behind the stomach. This is the inner stomach and you see this is small um, sac or small little cavity behind the stomach is uh, known as lesser sac. Let me remind you, there is another video about the stomach and lesser omentum. Anyway, this is the stomach and this is the double layer of peritoneal um, uh, membrane that's known as the lesser omentum. Let me show you. So, you can watch another video for that, but for now, Again, this is the stomach, and you know the stomach um, connected to the uh, liver. This is the liver, right? So, stomach connected to the liver uh, is through a peritoneum, a double layer of peritoneum. This peritoneum, you know, one of them, uh, I'm talking about the stomach now and the liver. Uh, so one of them is the uh, lesser omentum. Lesser omentum composed from two parts, guys. So this is a membranous part, right? And this is a ligamentous part. So this part and this part, both of them um, make the lesser omentum, a double layer of peritoneum. Now, the uh, why is known as lesser omentum because um, it connects the lesser curvature of the stomach lesser omentum because it it connects the lesser curvature of the stomach and the first part of the duodenum to the uh, liver up so this part known as hepato because hepat is something related to the liver, right? Hepatogastric ligament, and this is a hepatodudinal ligament. Both of them, as I said, make the lesser omentum. Behind this, behind the stomach, and behind the lesser omentum, I think you can see the shadow of the a cavity. This cavity is known as lesser sac. So, where is the entrance for this cavity? This is the entrance. There is another video also about the omental foramen, or as known as epipluic foramen, right? So this is the lesser sac. Uh, so, excuse me. This is the greater sac, right? So the peritoneal fluid moves from greater sac toward the lesser sac through this for ramen. Anyway, so the lesser sac is a small cavity located behind this area, behind the stomach and behind the lesser omentum. Now, so it lies behind the stomach and lesser omentum and here in this cross section at the level of the stomach you can see that this cavity or lesser sac is located behind the stomach because this is anterior right and this is the vertebra so this is uh post sorry this is posterior anyway so this is the stomach and this is the lesser omentum that i explained right behind it there is a lesser sac. Where is the opening? Where is the entrance for this sac? This is the opening. It's called omental foramen or epipluic foramen, as I mentioned. Now, this is anterior and posterior. What about the extension of this sac up and down, superiorly and inferiorly? Well, let me show you. This is, uh, uh, again, the stomach, and this is the um, omentum. So, 
this is the lesser omentum behind it behind the stomach and lesser omentum there is a lesser sac and this is the entrance again so it extends the lesser sac extends up up to the liver up and down it goes down behind the uh, stomach and all the way down between the two layers of a greater omentum this a double layer of peritoneum known as greater omentum there is also another video about greater omentum and lesser omentum you can watch for you know so but indeed look this is a sagittal or parasagittal section uh, for the abdomen and pelvis so look where is the stomach this is the stomach and this is the lesser omentum behind the stomach and lesser omentum there is you see the blue color this is the um, uh, lesser sac or what's known omental pursa you know mostly they use omental pursa especially more and I think grace as well so this blue color is the lesser sac or omental pursa that extends up behind the liver this is the liver and all the way down between the two layers of a greater omentum this is the two layers of a greater omentum you see the blue color but not all the way down why because these two layers of greater omentum you know they are obliterated I mean closed they adhere to each other they are attached to each other so here is there is no gap indeed so the the dresser sac will extend up from the uh, seer part of the liver up to the say half or so the distance um, between the two layers of greater omentum now that was anterior and anterior and posterior superior and inferior extension what about the right and left okay you know this is the right side of the body and this is the left side okay let's start with the left side you see the sac the lesser sac extended extended to the left until the spleen this is the spleen and from spleen you can see there are two ligaments one that connects the spleen to the stomach and it's known as gastro splenic this is a gastro splenic ligament gastro it means something related to the stomach we call it gastro, gastro splenic and spleno renal from spleen to the kidney that's why it's called spleno renal renal something related to the kidney right we call it renal spleno because of spleen gastro related to the stomach so this is the left border of the sac what about the right border you know the right border is this opening that we talked about it's what known as omental foramen or epipleuic foramen where is that okay so this is this is the foramen this is the foramen the um, lesser sac extended uh, up to the diaphragm and uh, inferiorly between the superior part uh, of the gap between the two layers of greater omentum so look this is the liver and we know that there is uh, a reflection of the peritoneum on the posterior inferior 
surface of the lamellar liver and this is you know so this reflection of peritoneum as we mentioned before creates a kind of a recess which is known as the superior this recess is the superior recess of the lesser sac or omental porsa now so the superior border of the lesser sac made by uh, diaphragm and the posterior layer of coronary ligament you know there is a video I think you can watch it it's about the coronary um, ligaments and inferiorly you know it's as I mentioned the greater momentum is obliterated it's not open okay double layer but they are obliterated united diffused to each other so the lesser sac extends up to the superior um, uh, part of the layers of the greater momentum down in this uh, schematic drawing again also this is the liver and you know this is the reflection of peritoneum that uh, creates the um, posterior layer of coronary ligament and this is the superior recess this is a blue color right this is the superior recess of the elemental bursa and this is the of course the diaphragm here so this is the lesser sac that extends down between the uh, superior part of the two layers of greater momentum. You know why it's, here is patent? It's like open, right? You see the lesser sac is open here, but here it's like obliterated. Why? Because this is in adult. In adult, the layers of greater momentum like obliterated, but this is in infant, so it's open, still open, right? Let me uh, show you uh, quickly again where is the lesser sac. This is the uh, lesser sac in this cross section that extends up to the diaphragm, and um, you know, it's located behind the stomach because this is the lesser sac, right? Be look behind the stomach and the lesser uh, omentum, which is a double layer of peritoneum. And you know that this is the, if we follow the peritoneum, you know, it reflects on the posterior surface of the liver. This reflection creates a kind of posterior layer of coronary ligament. And this is the superior recess of the um, lesser sac. So lesser sac extends up into the superior recess and it extends down into the superior part of the greater momentum. This is the greater momentum and you know in the adult it's a kind of obliterated and closed. So this is the so the lesser sac extends up to the upper part of the greater momentum. Okay, so let me show you uh, briefly uh, clinical correlations related to the uh, lesser sac or omental porsa. So, in this case, you see this is the stomach that's reflected up and the space behind the stomach and lesser omentum this space is known as lesser sac or omental porsa. So, if there is a rupture in the wall of the stomach, so the contents of the stomach can leak into the lesser sac. Furthermore, you see this is the pancreas, which is an important organ in the posterior. Um, abdominal cavity and you know it's located behind the lesser sac and but if in case of inflammation in the pancreas the inflamed pancreas or injured pancreas um, 
can also result in the passage of pancreatic fluid into the lesser sac as a case you know create a kind of a cyst that um, known as pancreatic pseudo cyst can be detected using uh, a CT you can read more about it also there is another uh, situation related to the lesser sac in which although it's rare but it does happen so sometimes loops of the small intestine can get in through the epipluic foramen this is the epipluic foramen or omental foramen there is a video on it so you can watch it to learn more about it anyway so loops of small intestine getting through this foramen to the lesser sac and strangulated at this foramen and so these uh, strangulated intestine should be removed we can say herniated intestine because it's a kind of uh, internal hernia so these loops of intestine should be removed but you cannot cut any border of epipluic foramen because each border contains blood vessels so you cannot cut it just to widen it and make it like wider and get the intestine out now so the the way to uh, pull the intestine out is just first to decompress the uh, strangulated intestine and as I said decompress them and pull them then out to the lesser sac from lesser from uh, lesser sac to greater sac sorry outside right so these loops of intestine that's strangulated inside the lesser sac should be decompressed and pulled out from lesser sac to the greater sac outside for their normal location hope you find uh, value in it and thank you